I'm Maura Marco. And I'm Bobby Marco. And this is We Found Adventure Live. And we're here today because a lot of people over the past weekend while we were presenting at Midwest Mountaineering's Outdoor Expo were asking a lot of questions about how to sit in a canoe with a baby and a toddler and do they jump out? So we're hoping to answer those questions for you here tonight. Alrighty, first of all, our canoe. Our canoe is our guest star today. <gasps> Whoops. And um, this is our North Star canoe. It's a North Wind 20, so it's actually 20 feet 5 inches long. It's a four seater. We currently only have three of the seats in. And it is made right here in Minnesota by an amazing company. Though it be 20 feet 5 inches long, she's six, six inches. She's a mere 54 pounds because of her special um, Kevlar material that she is made out of. Um, and she's a, she's a good boat. Yeah, it's really great for in the Boundary Waters um, in northern Minnesota where we have to carry our canoes between lakes. So for that, we want a lighter weight canoe that we can carry, um, especially with one person carrying it so that you know, somebody else can be in charge of wrangling the kids. Um, but it's not great for if we were doing a lot of river canoeing because it's... Yeah. It's not as durable, um, so you, you sacrifice lightweightness for strength. Yeah, I would not take her on a river. So, how do we sit in our canoe? This is the bow of the canoe. So, in the front here, in our front seat, Bobby would be sitting. Um, in our seat directly behind him, we have Jack, who's actually sleeping right now. So, this is our Jackie boy. And then behind them, let me just move over here, would be Rowan. And that's why we don't have our fourth seat in right now. Um, she is too little to just sit alone on a seat. So we usually bring along a Deffer, which is usually Grandpa Mike, who Rowan and him are best friends, so it works out perfect. They sit back here together. If you don't have a Grandpa Mike to come along, um, a wash basket can work really well for non-crawling babies, especially ones that can kind of sit up and sit by themselves, but maybe you might fall over. You could line this um, with towels if you wanted, or even your sweaters or rain gear for the day to make it a little softer for them. But we've heard wash baskets work great for little babies. And we also have, if you have a canoe that doesn't have a middle seat, we really recommend this stool from Ikea. It's $8, it's super lightweight, and it has a ton of uses. It was one of our favorite pieces of gear that we brought along until we got a canoe that had a, a middle seat for Jack. Um, yes, those early trips we had a 17 foot canoe and, and Jack would sit there. On the stool. Middle. It's like the perfect height for a canoe for a little kid. Um, and then, let me just move this. We also have a knee bed from North Star Canoes. This is great. It's a thick foam. So oftentimes people use it if they're going to be kneeling while paddling their canoe. Um, we use it for insulation for the duffer who has to sit on the ground on the floor of the canoe That way their butts not quite so cold and to keep Rowan warm as well um, And then this is also great in camp. We use this as a play mat. We use this while we eat um, Rowan will usually sit on top of this and that way if she drops food. It's not dropping to the ground She's not eating rocks like she kind of tends to do um, It makes clean up a snap makes clean up really so easy Fold it up and all the food crumbs are in there and you pour them into a bag yeah, the only downside to this knee bed, I would say, is that, um, well, first, it's pretty expensive. I think it's $150. And also, if it gets wet, it's kind of hard to dry out on a humid it stays day. stays soggy. So, just things to think about. And you can get smaller ones. So, I think this is the biggest one. Um, but they're also great for dogs. If you're bringing a dog along, yeah. it gives them a place to go in the canoe where they're not um, slipping around on their nails. Yeah. So, that is how we sit. We've also had it where we've had an additional child along. So we have two adults. Um, we've even had three adults and three kids in here. We can show an example of that. So, um, so here's Rowan's in the back um, with her Aunt, Aunt Katie. Katie, and then Jack's in the blue, and then we got Ryan, and then Mora. And so I don't know what I was doing. You were taking the picture, but he was sturning up that day. Um, but this middle, the seats are big enough where you can kind of fit two small people together. Um, just be prepared for the bites that you would expect from that. Yeah, and here's a picture of Jack in that 17-foot canoe we were talking about sitting on the Ikea stool. So you can see it only had two seats, and so we basically made a third seat with that stool. Yeah, it worked really, really well. 
Um, we tried a lot of different things. Like we tried a little tiny um, like lawn chair. That's what one friend recommended, but it was really tippy. So what I like about the stool is that it's just very, it has big feet and it's super solid. So we don't have to worry about him falling over because our kids are kind of clumsy. Yeah. Another thing we've done with Rowan is put her between my legs in the back of the boat. So you can't see her in this picture, but she's there. Uh, she's just really down low. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and she was not a fan of that, which is why after that trip, we appealed to Grandpa Mike and said, hey, you want to come with your grandbabies to the Boundary Waters? And he was all for it. He's a big Boundary Waters guy, which was great. But this um, year, now that she's a year and a half, she'll... This is going to be a whole new game. Yeah. I, I don't know what she's going to do, because um, a lot of people ask us, because um, it was at Lindsay at Minneapolis that said, how do you keep kids from wreaking havoc, I believe, something along those lines. Um, on Instagram, she asked us that question beforehand. And there are lots of different ways to keep your child engaged while they're on the boat. Because we thought there's no way our son is going to sit still. He's going to be in the water. He's going to tip us. This is going to be awful. So the best way to find out if your child will sit in a canoe is to just try it. Go to a local lake, especially one that might even rent a canoe. So you can just go out on the water for a half an hour, then have a little picnic or play at a, par a playground nearby and just see what they do because they might surprise you just like Jack did for us because we really weren't expecting it to go as well as it did. Um, yeah, so, you really liked the new perspective you got. Yeah. He was down low and we went on this little creek and so we had all birds on the shore um, and he was really into it uh, almost more so than hiking. Yeah, I would agree because he had more freedom to move. He wasn't so confined to a carrier. Um, but some of the things that we do to keep our kids engaged is we do always give them a paddle. This is Jack's Bending Branches Twig Paddle. It's just wonderful for him. It's super lightweight. It does have a rock guard, um, which is good because this is a shovel a lot of times with our toddler. At first, Bobby was like, don't dig in the ground. And I was like, come on, like he's a little guy. It's what he's gonna do. Um, so giving him a paddle is great. Does he drop the paddle in the water? Sometimes they float. They're pretty easy to retrieve. Um, Bobby has dropped his paddle in the water. So it happens to the best of us. Um, you can tie a little rope to it if you don't want to lose it. Yeah, I don't like that idea simply because I can see him getting tangled in that little rope and getting frustrated or that he's not as able to move around with it. Um, I just feel like that would annoy him. It's also easy. The paddle floats, so it's easy to grab. Yeah, it's really easy to grab. Uh, another thing we do is we always have our map with us. We do use a GPS um, on our phones, but we also... That was probably really loud. Sorry, guys. Um, but we also always get the paper map um, if you're in Minnesota and want to go to the Boundary Waters, REI has these and so does Midwest Mountaineering. Um, put it in a waterproof bag. Jack loves to look at the map and he loves to be like, oh, we're right here, mommy. And there are red dots for campsites. And so he likes to find our campsites. Um, so this is a great tool to use as well to keep them entertained. And again, something you have along, you don't need to pack it extra. Another thing that we do is toys. We don't bring a lot of toys into the wilderness with us. But we like to bring this tiny little hipster pouch from Anya, which is a carrier, carrier a soft structure carrier company. Um, this is actually the um, limited edition Hike It Baby version. And it's not large, but inside you can hold things like sunglasses. So if it's getting too sunny, you can just pop them on and not be frustrated. We found a little shovel works really well for them to be able to sort of scoop and dig in the water. And again, you should be able to grab it pretty easily if they let go. Um, and then our favorite, this is what our neighbors recommended to us. They met in the Boundary Waters many years ago and um, she, was one, she was part of the first all-female Outward Bound, bound class. class. So she's an incredible woman to talk to. And she said, bring a couple of Matchbox cars and they can race them, which I won't do because they'll be super loud. Um, on the bottom of a canoe. Could even bring along a super fun Goofy in a tub car. Um, but that's really all we bring in terms of toys. And this pouch can be um, just sort of tied on to this so they can't lose it, tied onto the feet there. Um, but that works great for a source of entertainment, just little things for them to do to occupy them. And then snacks. Let's talk about snacks. Because Our family loves the snacks. We love the snacks. We mainly live on snacks. So one fateful journey, we forgot to kit the snacks out. They were packed at the bottom of our bag. Not a good idea. So now I am hyper aware of our need for snacks. 
which is why I love my Stillquist life jacket because it has two massive pockets on the front. So I've got everything in here. I can have their favorite bars, for root snacks, which is a great treat for the summertime, applesauce, and our absolute favorite canoe trip treat, the sucker. This is great because it's not going to melt. So dum-dums work well. I didn't have any dum-dums, but I did have a leftover Valentine's Day sucker. Um, these are just great because yeah, they're gonna get sticky. Yeah, the bottom of your boat might be a little red, um, but it's going to put something in their mouth, quiet them down, and it's great. Um, other things I have in my life jacket that are easily accessible. These are all things we definitely need as parents. First and foremost, Purell, because our babies are dirty. <laughs> um, especially changing diapers on the go. This is great to have handy. I also have my sunscreen in here. Just having it ready to go in a little bottle is great. And then I also have the ever needed tissue. I might actually swap this out for a little pack of wet wipes instead because of the sticky factor with the suckers and the fruit snacks and the whatnot. Um, but all these things I can fit right in my life jacket. I don't need to go into a bag to grab them. I don't need to tip anybody around. I can just grab them and hand them. So every morning, Bobby and I divvy up the snacks for each child because Bobby sits by Jack and I sit by Rowan in the stern. And that way we can just hand them things and it makes it super easy. Um, so that's how we get our kids to stay. And they, they have done long days. Um, in five hours? Yeah. No. We, last summer, we canoed across the Boundary Waters. It took us six days. Um, we entered in at Moose Lake and we exited at Sag, uh, Saginaga Lake. <laughs> and, uh, it was uh, 65 miles? Yeah, I think. Or 50? 45? Yeah, it was miles. It was a week? It was a week long. Um, and we had a ton of fun. Um, and we did have a lot of extra adults with us, with us, which made it doable and easy, easily doable, I should say. Enjoyable. And there you go. Enjoyable. Um, but we had long days where we were doing 11, 12 miles yeah, with multiple with portages. with five portages. And they both did it. We had, Rowan was nine months at the time and Jack was two and a half, um, almost three. And it, it just worked. I mean, the kids love it. I feel like they have that sense of fear ingrained into them that they know not to go in. Should they start to lean over? Because they do like to lean over and put their hands in the water. And I definitely encourage that. Um, do you want to do the picture? Yeah. They, the, the children's life jackets do have a handle on the back of them so that if they're going too far over, you can just grab a hold the parent, that's the adult, I should say, that's closest to them if they're making you nervous. But really, we have never even had a close call, I would say, with it. Um, Rowan here, it looks like she's just kind of dangling grandpa. She's actually sitting in grandpa's arms. Um, Jack's gonna fall But the boat, the boat does a good job of, of containing them. Yeah. So we, yeah, like Mara said, never been a close call. So it was something we worried about beforehand, and it's one of the big things people always ask us about. Yeah. How do you keep them from falling in the water? And we are not the only ones that have had success. Um, there are lots of people out there that have done it. Um, Bobby's yeah. gonna talk about a few of them. So we... We asked you guys, like, what are your tips? What works for you? Um, so a few of you responded. So we got Scott from Bull Moose Patrol, which uh, if I did this, I would be in the water. Um, <laughs> but he does a technique called poling, and this is on the St. Croix River. And so instead of using a paddle, using a pole. And so you can see between his legs is his kid. Um, so he said that it worked, that positioning works really well when they're poling because his kid can grab onto his legs for stability. Um, and if he was to fall forward or fall backward, he wouldn't land on his child um mountain mom yyc on instagram uh she reached out and said that uh she doesn't like to sit and paddle so she uses a stand-up paddleboard but her husband and their child sit in a tandem kayak and i know a lot of people ask us about kayak how can you kayak with uh, your child so this boat's great because they're able to put stuff um, in the front and the back of the boat have um, two people in there i think she also mentioned uh that they can actually fit three. They can fit two adults and the child in the middle if they have to. And then this is a family that really inspires us. Um, Sarah and Dwayne from Campfire and Kids. And they've done some really big canoe expeditions up in the Yukon with their, as, with their family. So you can see here, I can't remember if they have a 16 foot boat or a 17 foot boat, um, but their kids are able to sit side by side. Um, our children would just grab each other's faces the whole time. <laughs> So we like having separate seats for them. <laughs> they need some. They need space between them. That's for sure. 
And then one last family here, um, you can find them on simplypropelled.com. They have a lot of really great movies that they've put together about their family adventures, bikepacking and canoe expeditions. And you can see they have a similar setup to Campfires and Kids where they've got the kids side by side and parents split up front and back. So we are not the only ones that have been successful at this. You too can be successful at canoeing with your kids. You could even have your kids nap in the canoe. Dare I say it, but it does work. We have had success on this multiple days. Um, Jack even fell asleep <laughs> when he was up against a portage pack. He got super whiny and he wanted me and I'm in the stern and he's in the bow. And I just said, Jack, you're tired. You've got a bag behind you, lean back and fall asleep. And he did, it was like the most amazing thing. And then we got to a portage and we had to wake him up. Yeah. Um, but he has oh. slept through portages. But he puts his arm inside. Oh, yeah. He loves to put his arms in his life jacket. It's so frustrating because then he'll walk around on portages and fall and he doesn't have hands to catch himself. And so we were like, does his arm have to be in there when he's sleeping? He was fine. Um, but I've even had both of them fall asleep on me while in the canoe. Um, this is, I'm seriously obnoxiously proud of this moment. Grandpa took up paddling um, for a little bit while I got the kids to both fall asleep on me in the back. This was one of our 10 mile five portage days. Um, and that, that was great that we were able to do that. Um, and if you have a baby, you can get that baby to fall asleep in your arms on the canoe very easily. And this particular trip here, um, poor Bobby was left to paddle by himself for a very long time while Jack took this epic like two hour nap in the canoe. It's three or four miles of solo canoeing. Yeah, I was six months pregnant at the time, so I'm not as comfortable as I look because I've got a six month pregnant belly and I have a 25 pound um, two year old in my in my arms. Grandpa's backrest came in. Grandpa's handy, backrest came in. He that was a that was a lifesaver on that trip. Um, but we here you can see that we're using an umbrella. Somebody was asking about the yeah, sun. Stesha Pearl was asking our favorite tips for prolonged sun exposure along the trips. Yeah, so first of all, an umbrella works really great not only for rain but also for sun. I mean, you don't need anything fancy. You can simply get a little umbrella from Target that's easily compactable. It's back in the portage pack um, right now. So keep it handy if uh, <laughs> it's a sunny day. And another thing we do is we all wear wide brimmed hats. Here, our Jackie Bear is wearing the Sunday Afternoons bucket hat. That's an outdoor research bucket hat. Oh, I'm sorry. This is an outdoor research bucket hat. Um, Sunday Afternoons has a great hat. This is the Explorer's covers hat. Covers the back of their neck up really well. Um, it's adjustable, so this one fits them from like two to five years old. Um, so it's great protection. And if you watched last week, we talked about bug protection. These hats are great because you can treat them with permethrin and keep both bugs and sun away. Yep, and the biggest thing I would say is make sure you find a hat with a strap. Not only is that making a baby less likely to take it off, but also on really windy days, that strap keeps that hat on when in the boat. Because um, we had, I, my hat may have blown away when I didn't have my strap on it. And hats do float. They do. We learned that. We were like, it's going to sink. But we, we had plenty of time to get it out. So that was no problem. And then do you want to talk about the sunscreen we use? We love baby Gannick sunscreen. That's what's in my little tube here. If you just can't see it. Um, I think I left it in the other room. But... Uh, Baby Gannix is great. I love it because it's not oily. I use it on everybody. It's an SPF 50. Um, even after like re re repeating the application of it throughout the day, I don't feel gross. I don't feel like I'm just putting oil on oil. Um, so we really like it. Yeah, and then for babies under six months, and for all of us, frankly, yeah. if it's really sunny out, you can see if you look at Jack's arms here, he has long oh, sleeves yeah. on to protect him from the sun as well. So lot, lots of ways to protect and keep you know, go out there for a long day in the sun. I mean, that was the first thing that, you know, we hadn't canoe camped until a few years ago. We didn't realize how, you know, there's no trees, there's yeah. no shade. We're it's like, obvious oh, when you think yeah, about it. we're not in the woods. But when we're out there, like, oh, it's really hot out here. Um, and not being water people. Yeah. So that's something to just think about when you're going out there, how you're going to protect yourselves from the sun. Yeah. Um, and then we always have our rain gear handy. I don't know, should I grab? Grab what? Grab the rain gear. Why not? It's in the front part. Pouch of our Bob is going to get it good because I'm kind of trapped. Um, we always have our rain gear super handy. We have found that the weather... <laughs> we have found that the weather can just be so unpredictable. When we are in the wilderness, we like to use our in-reach... Um... Garmin in-reach. Nope, it's in the front pocket. 
um, to get weather reports, which is great, but they're often incorrect. And so what we like to do is just have our rain gear handy because every day we're in the boundary waters, it seems like it rains at some point. Um, so having our Oki wear rain suits ready to go for the kids, having an umbrella right there that we can just grab and throw on is really great. Grandpa was just telling us that some people recommend that you get a life or a raincoat that's big enough that you can just throw it right over your life jacket. So you don't have to worry about taking off your life jacket, putting on your raincoat. Um, and that's a really good point. And though one thing on the umbrella, this is our umbrella and she touched on it earlier. It's just a cheap one from Target. Yeah. Like we had it laying around the it's, house. It was, we didn't it's buy like anything. a decade old and it's $10. It's falling apart, but it sometimes that flows away too. Be careful. We've lost a lot of things. We've always retrieved them. Um, so this having... trip only Jack gets a raincoat. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know where Rowan's is. Um, I think it's in the garage. Also for shoes for your kids while they're in the boat, we always tell people when you're canoeing, have a pair of wet shoes and a pair of dry shoes because the bottom of the boat does get wet. And also they're gonna be walking in the water and let them explore. This is a time for them to have fun. So we have two different brands of, rain or of water shoes that we really like. I find it funny that they're called waterproof when they're like super holy, um, but it's just because they can dry faster. So this is a Keen um, waterproof shoe uh, sandal that we really like. I love the closed toe. That's what I'm looking for because a lot of times when they're walking on the bottoms of rivers or lakes, there are a lot of rocks and I don't want stubbed toes. And on portages as well, you can yep. see it's, that's a rock. It's like portage. a good solid shoe. Um, they take a little bit long to dry out. So I also like these Jambu. Jambu KD. Jambu KD shoes. Um, these ones dried out a little bit faster. There's a lot more mesh on them and less material, but it still has the closed toe. It still has the thick sole for longer portages, which is really great. They and they don't these, smell. Yeah, the older Keens, if you go to like a thrift store and find a pair of older Keens, um, they're not... Non-stink? Stink. Yeah, now they like do something where they don't stink like horrific death anymore. Um, it used to be bad. Um, so I'm glad they fixed that. Yeah, you get in the car and you're like, what died? What died in here? It's like, oh, it's just our son's feet. It's, you're fine. Um, so we love those two brands of shoes. They work super well. Um, and if, you, if we haven't covered what you wanted to know today, we have um, some resources for you to check out. First of all, feel free to ask us some questions. Um, but if you have extra questions and you want to refer to a book, Babes in the Woods is a readily available book. Um, it has a little section on boating with kids. It's not super thorough, but it's something. If you really want to get into canoeing with your babies, Cradle to Canoe is amazing. I read this book cover to cover. Um, it's not in print anymore, but you can get on it, get it on Amazon. It's by Rolf and Deborah Craker. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but this, it covers babies to preschool aged kids. So this is where I got a lot of our ideas, a lot of our tips. Um, and it's extremely thorough for all those ages. Yeah, so it's a great resource for parents to get that want to canoe with their kids. Um, and do we have any other questions to answer? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, let's look through. We had a few comments from people. Um, we need more wild. How amazing. I've been thinking about how to get my toddler in a canoe recently. So hopefully this helped you. Um, Newly Zealand. Love canoeing with our kids. We did that all the time in the U.S. And we didn't capsize once. Nice. Which is awesome. Neither we have, have we. We've got to capsize as well. Not gone well. Um, uh, thanks, Emily. She says, thanks from Auburn. Alabama. I especially like the book recommendations. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and we'll, we'll put links to those books in afterwards as well, so you can find those easily. Yeah, so just to finish out today's program, we're going to be talking about who's inspiring us this week. And this couple is beyond inspiring. Dave and Amy Freeman are National Geographic Explorers of the Year um, from a couple years ago, they lived in the Boundary Waters for a whole year to raise awareness that the Boundary Waters is in danger of being um, having a sulfite or, or copper mine um, coming in close to the waters. Um, they have a great book, which is called A Year in the Wilderness. Um, beautiful photography and just a really great story. So. Be sure to check this out. They wrote this after they spent their year in the wilderness. Right now, they are currently pedaling to DC. They've already paddled to DC, so now they're pedaling. Um, they are bringing a Winona canoe to the capital to raise awareness. They're doing a ton of book signings and um, 
and they always work with school groups along the way and you can sign the canoe as they go by so check out um we saw it the other day and it was already i know i was like i don't know where to sign so (laughs) they just started so they started in ely minnesota and they're pedaling Pedaling washington with a canoe on a little cool trailer yeah so it's their book tour instead of driving around and doing the book tour they're doing on a bike and so you can help uh, help the cause by donating to the Kickstarter. They have some great um, rewards from different local companies. The North Star kicked in some limited edition glasses. Oh, those uh, are really one. cool glasses. Yeah. Beer glasses. So lots of different stuff. So check that out. Um, and they are definitely always inspiring us. We love um, everything that they do and we love following along. They're definitely people we look up to. We want to be them when we grow up. Yeah. And they so helped cool. us with our, we were planning our trip across the Boundary Waters. They helped check our route make sure we weren't going anywhere dumb yeah (laughs) give us tips on things to see along the way yeah well thank you so much for joining us tonight for this episode of we found adventure live um please let us know what you want us to talk about next week um because we are always open to new ideas as we said this one came just from this weekend um talking to talking to parents who want to get out with their kids and um yeah what so our, our next show will be on may 9th and uh, later in the week, we'll announce what the topic is. Mora is off to Zion National Park tomorrow. I sure am. So we'll be planning the episode at the last minute. Yeah, I'm going all by myself on my first trip away from my babies. So it should be interesting, but I'm going on a hiking my way retreat. Um, it's just women, it's mothers. This, this particular retreat is geared towards mothers. Um, so I'm really excited to meet these 13 women from around the country that I've never met before. And, um, I'm really thankful that grandma and grandpa are right over there and are going to be helping Bobby out with our babies. Thank you, grandma and grandpa. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Hope your babies sleep well. See you next week.